Ministry spokesman Lee Dong Hang said Wednesday the possibility has been discussed, but no decision has been made yet. South Korean President Moon Jae-in is seeking for a two-track policy towards the DPRK, which includes sanctions and dialogues. He sent two special envoys to Washington and Tokyo early Wednesday. And another envoy is expected to visit China on Thursday. Dick said in a radio interview that the deployment of Saad required parliamentary approval. He added that if there were any legal issues related to it, this uh, deployment, the Democratic Party would recommend returning the system to the U.S. In July 2016, Washington and Seoul agreed to deploy Thad in South Korea with the procedure beginning in March this year. Several neighboring nations have been strongly opposed to its deployment, including China and Russia. You either support North Korea or you, or you support us because that's what it comes down to. You are either with North Korea or not. And what that means is when we are talking about sanctions, are these countries putting these sanctions into effect? Are these countries actually falling through on the sanctions that they're supposed to? We want to look at the current sanctions in place and we want to look at strengthening the sanctions. For peace on the Korean Peninsula, he has to stop his testing. He has to stop any nuclear programs that he has. The United States, we are willing to talk, but not until we see a total stop of the nuclear process and of any tests there. The DPRK categorically and totally rejects the UNSC's press statement, which called into question its bolstering of nuclear deterrence for self-defense, pursuant to the U.S.'s vicious anti-DPRK policy. Just in recent weeks, the U.S. conducted two test fires of intercontinental ballistic missiles, but the UNSC never mentioned them. The right to self-defense is the first criterion of sovereignty. If the U.S. and its followers pick on our self-defensive measures and hustle around, they will only end up in crushing defeat and regret. We will continue to develop highly precise and varied nuclear weapons and nuclear striking measures, and push ahead with any necessary preparations for tests of these weapons until the United States and its followers get the right mind and make the right choice. Wednesday's regular news briefing, China's foreign ministry spokesperson Hua Chenying says that China will continue with its comprehensive and faithful implementation of relevant UN resolutions. It is an important consensus reached by the international community that related parties concerned should stick to the goal of denuclearization of the peninsula, strictly carry out UNSC resolutions, and resolve the nuclear issue in a peaceful manner. Related discussions and actions by the UNSC should be in consistence with this direction. China will continue to make efforts to ease the tensions on the peninsula and resolve the nuclear issue peacefully at last. Hua Qing added that China, as a member of the UN Security Council and a close neighbor to the Korean Peninsula, has always been working to de-escalate the situation there, and these efforts will be continued. Wu Guoxiu, CGTN, Beijing. This is the main hotline South Korea would like to restore. It's in a room on the South Korean side of its border with North Korea. The green phone is for receiving calls from an equivalent room on the other side. The red one is for making them. Set up in 1971, the line was the basic communication tool between the two Koreas. But last February, facing increasing sanctions after a nuclear test, North Korea stopped using their end. Since then, all communication has been cut. South Korea's Unification Ministry says it's actively trying to change that. The government's most basic position is that for stability, communications lines between South and North Korea should open. We have come up with several ways to recover the lines between the South 
in North. Asked about economic ties, especially this train line between North and South Korea, which was tested in 2007 but hasn't been used since, the spokesman said such links were important and are being reviewed. Overall, despite North Korea's missile test on Sunday, South Korea's new liberal president Moon Jae-in is keeping the door open for dialogue. One further sign of optimism here is that since their new president was sworn in last week, there's been a spike of inquiries by South Koreans to the Unification Ministry about contacting North Korean residents. Despite the events of the last few days, it seems South Koreans are hopeful that inter-Korean relations will improve. In New York, as the United Nations Security Council this met to discuss further sanctions, even the U.S. ambassador suggested talks with Kim Jong-un are still possible. He has to stop his testing. He has to stop any nuclear programs that he has. The United States, we are willing to talk, but not until we see a total stop of the nuclear process and of any tests there. South Korean President Moon Jae-in, on his first visit to his defense ministry, said there is still a high possibility of military clashes. But he's not given up on dialogue yet. Andrew Tom This is the Joint Security Area. It's one place along the Korean Demilitarized Zone, or DMZ, where South Korean and DPRK soldiers come face to face. The thin strip of concrete running between these buildings is the border. The demilitarized zone is almost 250 kilometers long, four kilometers wide, except for here, and despite its name, one of the most militarized borders in the world, and of course, a flashpoint for any potential conflict on the Korean peninsula. 160 meters, that is the fourth largest flagpole in the world, and we're told the flag weighs 275 kilos. This area has been off limits to regular visitors for the past two years, since DPRK troops secretly laid landmines, resulting in serious injuries to two South Korean soldiers. Nearby is one of four uncovered DPRK tunnels. Officials believe there could be up to 20 more still undiscovered. This tunnel goes to about 75 meters in depth, and it's more than one and a half kilometers long. It was designed for infiltration, but given its width, it's estimated that about 20,000 troops could pass through here each hour. All that's passing through here today are tourists, still arriving in droves, saying they are not bothered by the current tensions. I've really enjoyed it too right now. I had a lot of good time inside the tunnel. I had a great time. This doesn't feel like war at all. Nothing. On a peninsula where an end to the war was never formally announced, this has become normal. But sporadic conflict here has claimed hundreds of lives on both sides over the years. Most Koreans hope this zone will one day disappear, but through talks and not another war. Jack Barton, CGTN, at the DMZ.